1010 XL 92.5 FM presents Jaguars Today with your hosts, Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Tuesday. Jaguars Today off and rolling. Three weeks, two days from your NFL draft. Jaguars restocking for the 2024 season and beyond. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. What are uh, things like in your world? Oh, they're all good. Good. Yeah. Pockets? Same old Tuesday. Getting same ready for a track old meet. Tuesday. You know. What does the same old Tuesday look like? For Practice, you? come back and do hack show. Okay. How you liking the split shift? Working out well? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for since July. Kind of used to it. Huh? Here. Yeah, I'm kind of immune to it. I got gotcha. you. You know, there are other people that work the same <laughs> shift Dylan works, though. Who do you hang out with, Pockets? Uh, during the coaching? week, is nobody. Just coaching, huh? Yeah, coaches, and then the kids I coach, and then I come home for about an hour, eat, come back up here. I stay out of pockets business for the most part, Tony. Mm-hmm. What's your love like, like pockets? None. Uh, none. Negative. Do we? Do you? You know, I don't. I don't know if the no, I don't do the Jaguars today naps. audience <laughs> is is exactly <laughs> your target environment, but maybe you know, sports possibly. fans could possibly. happen. You don't do the dating apps, though? No, 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 no. That's too weird for me, man. All right. Hey, ladies. I'm a person to person. I'm I'm very I'm a very personal person. You're so old school. Yeah. You really I, are. Like, I don't have many friends. I got a couple, five, six friends I golf with, and that's about it for me, man. Yeah, we used to have to swipe right with our eyes in the bar. Yeah. At <laughs> like one, one in the morning. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how that worked, man. Swipe right, like... You both glance at the door at the same time. That's what that. So was. when you wanted to hook up with somebody, not like go huh? home with them right then, but like if you wanted to meet up with them, you just tell them meet up at this spot at this time. Meet up at this spot at this time, <laughs> <laughs> or, or I don't know, you maybe pick them up, you know, for for a date yeah, if you're going have been out. An actual date. You get their phone number you and arrived, you got to call the house. You could have, you know, driven in the car together to some place or walked together to some place. Like I went to school, you know, at Flagler, so. Everything downtown, Tony, is like a yeah. five minute walk. No doubt. You know, didn't need a, that's one school you definitely did not need a car at. Anyway, uh, that's about as far as I need to get into Pockets Love Life <laughs> at this point in time. That's why I stay out of it. You know what? I'm just like a, an old creepy guy asking mm-hmm. questions that I don't need the answers to, quite frankly. Uh, we've got a question for you. Tony came up with this one. Actually, came up with it last week. I thought it was a really good one. So we put it in the hopper. For today, the Tuesday top five, once again, shame on me, didn't send out an early uh, <laughs> warning yesterday. That's all right. You know what? You can participate or not. Yeah. Just, you know, the top fives do take a little more thought sometimes. That's they why do. we like to give yeah. you just a little advance on that. So today, we're asking, who are the five Jacksonville Jaguar draft picks that you were the most wrong about over the years in either direction? Meaning, you were wrong over enthusiastic or you're wrong you didn't think they'd be very good and they pleasantly surprise you i think mm-hmm. that's a harder category right because i don't i think fans inclination tone and my inclination i think sports people in general you want to be optimistic now there are the the self-style draft nicks that are like i wanted this guard in round four not that guard in round four and that's sure. fine right and then, but i think that's a smaller percentage of the audience and i think for most people they're like oh we got some garden round four. I hope he's good, right? And you don't really feel yeah. like oh, I think he's going to stink, and then he surprised me. This guy, I found it harder to find guys in the other direction, and I think that would be the case with any fan base looking at their draft history. Is yeah, I guess. think so. I was going through the draft history, you know, looking at that last night, and I think I wound up with a list of thirteen or fourteen players okay. that I was considering for the five right, where I could put myself back into the mindset I had when they got picked and then what they wound up being, right, and trying to figure out which of those my feelings were the strongest about. One was a big factor in how I, I made this list and how far off I was, you know, was the the bigger one, you know, to figure out where sure. exactly to put them on this list. But I did, you know, looked at all the draft picks and had a list of like 14, 15 players that I considered for the list and had to – well, it'll, you know, get it down to five. I think for me, like, once I got to five that I knew fit, mm-hmm. then i take each one. And I, I couldn't tell you exactly how deep my list was, but I'm like, more than this, get nah, just, I just move on to the next one, right? If you didn't yeah. replace one of the guys that was uh, in that uh, list already for me. So we'll get to that today. Demetrius Harvey's going to stop by yeah. in hour number two. We'll talk all about all the way to scuttlebutt and rumor and innuendo. That's kind of 
where we're at right now in you know, the scuttlebutt rumor innuendo sure. uh, stage of the offseason. Although, you know what? They've kind of kept up a little bit of a steady drumbeat, just like the NFL has something that they roll out seemingly every week. Like the Jags have spaced out some of their signings. They had the initial flurry. Then you had, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Travis Gibson getting in there, Joey Sly getting in there. Then they had Josiah DeGuara last week. So, uh, you know, again, they may sign a guy or two between now and the draft. It's probably not someone who's going to move the needle a whole lot for right. you yeah. in uh, any particular direction. All right, Pockets, won't we fire it up today since, um, you know, you were sitting home alone pining away for a, for a life last night. I'm sure you came up with a fantastic uh, five options. So let's begin the countdown. Number five. All right, so I want you to lead us off. Who's And I, I expect us to have wildly divergent lists. They ought to be. Uh, yeah. You would think, right? Because they're all personal opinion Yeah, it's how you players. felt. I heard yeah. you talking with Dana Jeff. It's how we felt about that player at yeah. that point in time. And doesn't matter what the pundit said. Didn't matter what anybody said other than your own feeling. Yeah, this is the certainly the strangest one on my list of five, given the way the whole thing is played out. Third round pick in 2019, Quincy Williams. I enjoyed some of his highlights from Murray State when he was drafted. I was not surprised at all when he didn't find any success through the two years that he was here in Jacksonville. I wasn't upset when they let him go. I was like, oh, that's a bummer, you know, that a third-round pick didn't work out for him. He's had over 100 tackles in all three of his seasons with the Jets. He's a first-team All-Pro this year with the Jets. I was wrong. You know, about the level of player that Quincy Williams has wound up being. I I wish I was saying about a player that was blossoming in a Jaguars uniform as opposed to a Jets uniform, but my feeling on him, I thought I had nailed it as far as my level of disappointment Mm -hmm. with him when he was here through those first couple years. He goes to the Jets. He's a really, really good uh, middle linebacker for the New York Jets. I was wrong about what he wound up being. Yeah, I just want us to interject our thoughts on these guys who don't make each other's list because I thought about Quincy, and I did think he was going to be – like, I was excited about Quincy, Mm -hmm. right? Like, watching those, like, knockout hits that he delivered. for sure. Now, did I think he'd be an all-pro level player? No. But I did think he would be good, or at least I was cautiously optimistic Mm -hmm. about him. Uh, So, it's one of those – you know, sometimes a guy hasn't been good here – and he's blossomed elsewhere. He certainly did that. The, right. Like, so if you thought he was going to be pretty good, even if he didn't do it here, I would say it was 100% wrong for me, but I, I certainly didn't think he'd be to this, and I did consider Quincy Williams. Who you got at number five, Pockets? I had a reach for this one. I had a good four, and then I, had a, I reached out to Gus. I was like, Gus, I need an extra one. And he said, D.D. Westbrook. I was like, that's a good one. Absol- I kind of thought absolutely. this guy yeah. was a dude in college. Like, his last year at Oklahoma had 17 touchdowns, 1,500 yards. Award, I think he did, right? yeah. yeah. And he just really didn't kind of live up to that. But I was that was kind of one that, that reached out to me at five. I agree with you. Uh, and I looked at his numbers, and he was like, he was solid, you know, for a couple, like his second and third year were okay, and he didn't really blossom. But he also – I tried to avoid guys who had career-altering injuries as much as possible, and Didi had one of those. I don't know if he was ever going to live up to your expectations anyway, but I, I think that's a good one. Number five for me is uh, the first baby Baselli <laughs> that came down the line. Mike Pearson, go mm-hmm. back to 2002, right? now. Really unfair to Mike Pearson to have to follow Baselli and get the nickname – Baby Baselli, but you know, it's six foot seven, about 300 pounds. He was an okay player, yeah. you know, like and Mike's a good guy and all that. And this is not a personal slight on any of these guys, but he's the 40th overall selection by the Jags. He started 27 games in his first two years, Tony. He played in eight games the rest of his career, mm-hmm. and you know, injury a little bit there, but it was he was just even. When he was starting all 16 games for the Jags in his second season, he was just okay. Yeah, you know, it was just – and and it was more and, – and, again, not his fault. He wasn't pounding his chest saying, hey, I'm the next Tony Baselli. But he definitely had that nickname, and that's what people were looking for at that point in time. And, you know, uh, physically he looked like he fit the mold. So that was one uh, that left me wanting Mike Pearson back in 2002. Now, this is going to be interesting because I've seen a lot of these lists that – all the players are from the last, say, 10 years sure. or so. right? And it's really your perspective, how young or old you are, how long you've been following. And if you can even put yourself in the mind frame, it's hard for me. I went back and looked at those drafts, Tony. I'm like, yeah, this guy. And I'm like, 
how did I really feel about him? Right. Did I know enough about him? It's Pier- way easier to remember how you felt about a guy they drafted three years ago. And, but in yeah. Pearson's case, coming out of the University of Florida, yeah. you know, supposed to be the, the guy to replace Tony and all that, it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely one that sticks out in my mind. So, all right, uh, off to a good start. We got Quincy Williams, Dee Dee Westbrook, and Mike Pearson at number five. On our list, so we'll count them down throughout the course of the program today. If you want to get in and discuss any aspect of Jaguar football, we welcome you on the All-Pro Roofing phone lines at 641-1010. Same number for the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures. You can always hop in that YouTube chat and let us know what's on your mind, as well as social media on the X platform, at MD underscore 1010XL, at 1010XL Fat Tony, and at 1010 XL Denmark. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws, baby. Our man Chad Ryder has put together a comprehensive list of the top five draft needs of every team Okay. in the National Football League. How well did he do for our hometown Jacksonville Jaguars? We'll take a look at that next uh, and about an hour and ten minutes away from Demetrius Harvey of the Florida Times Union stopping by to class up the joint. We'll continue the countdown today. We're looking for the five Jaguar draft picks that you were the most wrong about over the years. Either you thought they were going to be way better than they turned out to be or the opposite. You didn't think much, and they pleasantly surprised you. Yeah, there's occasionally a guy like that Mm -hmm. as well. That's uh, one of mine is number four in my countdown. We'll do that as we continue along with Tony Smith and Dylan Denmark. I'm Mike Dempsey. You're listening to Jaguars Today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Jaguars Today Tuesday on 1010XL is brought to you by Dream Finders Homes. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. He was a cop and good at his job. Now he prowls the Badlands, an outlaw hunting outlaws, a bounty hunter, a renegade. Rick Ballou. Evenings on 1010XL. When you think about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Prime Roofing is Jacksonville's local contractor that manufactures, fabricates, and installs metal roofs. Schedule today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Mortgage rates have lowered going into this spring selling season. Have you had problems selling your home in the past? Are you looking for a promise, a solution? I'm here to give it for you. It's Chad and Sandy and chadandsandy.com, the real estate experts I trust and recommend with the sale of your home or mine for that matter. Maybe you want maximum equity or perhaps you're worried about costly repairs or upgrades. Chad and Sandy deliver this simple promise. They guarantee your home sold at an agreed upon price and deadline or they will buy it. You have literally nothing to lose. Take Pete in Lakeshore. I was in a pickle. I heard Chad and Sandy on the radio and called because I needed to cash out on a rental property fast. I was struggling to rent it. I called Chad and Sandy and I got an offer for full asking price within days. These guys made it easy and delivered big time results. Call the agents. I trust and recommend to sell your home. Chad and Sandy, they guarantee to sell your home or they will buy it. Find out more at chadandsandy.com or call 414-6200. Certainly facing challenging economic times. I can't speak for all of us. But for me, comforting to know my money is in good hands with ITP Partners. Take it here for ITP Partners. Jacksonville guys taking care of my Jacksonville money. I'll admit it. I don't understand a ton about the economy. Higher interest rates, 401ks. But I do know as I move closer to retirement, I continue to watch my money grow. Thanks to Chris Bryan, Jeff Hartman, Reagan Wright, Dan Abel, and Reed Wingate. Get in the game, guys. ITP Partners. Always there to help. For more info, Chris at ITPPartners.com or call 904-312-9751. Splish, splash, I'm taking up. Everything okay in here? Oh, yeah, sure is. You're wearing a life jacket. <laughs> sure am. In the tub? Practicing for when we head to the lake. I read about wearing one at wearitflorida.com. And wearitflorida.com told you to wear it in the tub? Nope, that was my idea. You know, Florida is the leader in boating fatalities, so a life jacket can save lives. As you were. Splish, splash, I was taking up. Learn more at uh-huh. wearitflorida.com. Mia here, and let me tell you about one of our area's best resorts, the Sawgrass Marriott Golf Resort and Spa. The Sawgrass Marriott is not only a great destination for a vacation, but it is also a great destination for dining on the Florida's first coast. 1912 Ocean Bar and Rooftop is now open on Ponte Vedra Boulevard, featuring Ponte Vedra's only oceanfront rooftop bar and lounge. Serving finely crafted cocktails and delectable eats, it's open daily from 4 to 10 with complimentary valet parking. XL Primetime, noon to 3 on 1010XL. 
race into Gate for big offers. By big, we mean great deals on Red Bull and a chance to win tickets to the big race coming to Miami May 3rd through 5th. Buy two 8.4 ounce cans of Red Bull, get one free. And if you're a MyGate Rewards member, you are automatically entered for a chance to win race tickets. Not a member? Download the Gate app and sign up today. See store for details. Go from good to gate. Brian and Angela Wall here with Window World. By now, everyone has heard about saving money on their energy bills. There are all sorts of things you can do to cut energy costs, but most people don't think about their windows. But Window World knows that the biggest energy loss in almost every home is the windows. There is more energy loss from old builder-grade windows than just about anything else in your home. You can upgrade your heating and air, your appliances. That's good, too. But before you do all that, upgrade your windows to Window World's energy-efficient windows. Window World's windows are easy to clean, energy efficient, and have the best guarantee in the business. Window World's slogan is simply the best for less, and we mean it. You get great American-made windows, and you get to keep more of your money when you buy from Window World. Need any more reasons to buy your windows from Window World? Call them today and set up your free in-home estimate, or go online to windowworldneflorida.com. Window, Window World, simply, simply the, the best, best for less. less. Thank you for your business. Window World also offers energy-efficient doors. Got a septic tank at your home or business? Give DuckDuckRooter a call today to schedule your pump-out service. From septic pump-outs, inspections, to new septic tank and drain field installations, we are Northeast Florida's only master septic contractor. DuckDuckRooter.com. Daily's Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily Stash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm with Greg from Cycles of Jacksonville, and when the sun's out, it's time to ride. And Triumph, tell me this, Greg, they've got new pricing that's going to bring more people to the showroom to check them out. They do. They've got two hot new models, both under 6000 one under 5000 Same great, legendary Triumph quality and ride. you got to come see it. And it's a big, heavy motorcycle underneath you. It is. It's all Triumph. Log on, cyclesofjacksonville.com, or check them out in the showroom. They're on Atlantic near Regency. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Now more Jaguars today on 1010XL. All right, continuing along, Demetrius Harvey about an hour away. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, Dylan Denmark here with you. We'll get to uh, Chad Ryder's Jaguar draft needs or I just team needs I guess at this point I was a little surprised Tony mm -hmm. mentally put together a list of five okay mm -hmm. Dylan do the same and when we get to that I'll just ask you to go through because I was surprised at one I, I'll just leave it I, I was a little surprised at the list not not shocked I didn't think it was bad but we'll get to that coming up uh in a bit six four one 1010, if you'd like to be a part of it on the All Pro Roofing phone lines, our man Byron in Gainesville has cracked the seal this morning. Good morning, Byron. Good morning, guys. Let me let me get it out of here. Duval! Duval! Byron, I've been missing some Duvals, I was telling the boys. You know, just, I feel like we're in a little bit of a, a lull right now, energy-wise. We need to pick this thing up as we head towards the draft. Hey, Amen. And I, I second that emotion and thought, guys. I, and I've, I've been missing in action. I think we all been a little wounded from last year. So, hey, it's time to, you know, dust ourselves off, man, and get back up and, and get ready to go. So, uh, guys, what I called about real quick, you know, Fred Taylor, man, I think he might have been the first draft from Florida. And um, I, I just remember that so well. And then, you know, one of the worst things from Florida came, Urban Meyer. Nah, but uh, nah. I was I was upset because we didn't draft Tim Tebow, the quarterback. He went to Denver, but he didn't work out at tight end. So, guys, what I, where I'm going with this is uh, being a Florida fan, the last five, you mentioned, you mentioned Mike Pearson, but I think the last five drafts from Florida, I don't know what happened, been bust. But if you will, go over those if you don't mind and tell me who they were. And I don't think they got anybody from Gainesville in the last five, 10, 15 years that's been worth a quarter since Peterson and uh, – <laughs> 
Fred Taylor. But correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm a Gator fan, so thank you, guys. All right, appreciate and you, Byron. Go Jags. Go Jags, Byron. Thank you, buddy. All right. Um, yeah, they look, they have gone to that Florida well. Certainly. A good bit, historically, over the years, right? Uh, Ventro Miller, don't know, right? Most recent uh, draft pick uh, tone. Uh, let's see here. Um as they go back through, who's next? Uh, C.J. Henderson, awful. Legend. Let me know if I'm missing anybody as I as I kind of skip through these. I'm just skimming at this point in time. Um, David Bryan should have been before him. Yeah, going backwards David, in time. Yeah, I'm going backwards. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you got Miller, Henderson, Jawan Taylor was an okay player, obviously. Yes. Uh, Taven Bryan. Yes. Dante Fowler. Josh Evans. Derek Harvey. Josh Evans is a good player. He was. Jo- Josh, if I thought enough about a seventh-round pick, Josh Evans would have been a good guy for this category today because yeah. he was just a really solid guy as a – Good player. You know, you get that out of a seventh-round pick, the career he had, I'm, I'm very happy yeah. with that. Derek Harvey, Reggie Nelson, D. Webb, Bobby McRae, Mike Pearson, Fred Taylor, Chris Doring was the first. Yeah, I'm going to say Fred was uh, the best of the bunch. Yeah. Fred was definitely the best of the bunch. <laughs> I thought about Chris Doring, too, because we're all excited, man. You you know, back in the 90s, all you did was watch Chris Doring score a billion touchdowns around these parts, yeah. right? And we're like, ooh, you're going to get some of that right here. Uh, all right, Pockets, why don't we do uh, number four on the countdown here? Number four. Working our way up towards number one, the player we were most wrong about when the mm-hmm. Jaguars picked him. In either direction, Pockets, who you got at four? Got me a Florida Gator. Dante Fowler. Mm. I saw him play in college, obviously, a lot. I thought he was going to be a lot better. He had moments, but he never was, like, consistent in Jacksonville. Obviously, he started with the injury, and then just he got traded away in 18. But, like, I remember the scooping score week one against Houston. I remember he had that, that strip sack against Brady week two in that revenge game. Other than that, there's not really anything that really sticks out to me from Dante Fowler. I got, I got things that stick out. Like him <laughs> running on the field when Jan was supposed to be the starter. I remember that. Him getting in a fist fight with Jan in the locker room. Yeah. I remember that. Didn't he throw somebody's groceries in the lake? He, he did that you know, as that well. Was, uh, yeah. like, I have Dante <laughs> memories, but none of them are all yeah. that positive. Uh, the yeah. shame of it is, uh, you know, tearing up his knee at that first practice, that man. And, such and, a bummer. And, and, and yeah. for that, again, I was excited about Dante. I wasn't. You know, like 100% sure he's going to be this 15-sack guy or anything like that. So, I didn't put him in there because he did. I mean, he was behind the eight ball right away. Stop me if you've heard this, Tony. Mm-hmm. He got better when he left, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. he had an 11-and-a-half sack season with the Rams in 2019. He had yeah. an eight-sack season here. Uh, but then, you know, the I mean, eight was not terrible it's in good. his second full season. But then yeah. he had two. He was banged up, he, he, you know. Uh, and then they trade him for a bag of circus peanuts, you know, and uh, he's been okay. He still gets employed, right? I mean, there's yeah. something Dante Fowler still finds employment in the National Football yeah, League. Yeah, guy getting to a second, a third, and fourth piece. contract, you're you're doing all right. All right, uh, number four for me, this is the one that went in the other direction. I wanted one player that represented somebody that outperformed my expectations. We might have the same guy here. Oh, maybe we do here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you better – Slow down if you see him, though, because he might pull you over. Ernest Wilford huh. uh, is my guy. Fourth-round pick by the Jags in 2004. Tony currently sits 14th on the all-time receiving list yeah. for Jacksonville with a pretty healthy – he's like around 14 yards per catch for his career or something like that, which yeah. is pretty healthy. I'll see him with his family at, like, a breakfast spot that I go to on the weekend. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. It's just there's Ernest. He loves he loves his yeah. golf. He, you can see him out at Southampton. At least you used to be able to see him out there quite regularly. He was there all the time. Right. You used to work out yeah. at Southampton. He'd practice out there and play out there yep. a good bit. But he was a fourth-round pick, pick number 120 overall in 2004. And, I, I, you know, we'll see. And, and, look, he wasn't great, but I did want somebody on the list that represented – exceeding what we thought. Just To me, it was kind of more like a, meh, we'll see. And then I thought he was, you know, uh, at times, mm-hmm. acted as the number one receiver for this team for a brief period of time, which said more about the overall talent at wide receiver, Certainly unfortunately. Did, yeah. Who you got? Uh, number four, I also have a player that exceeded my expectations. This was the slot that I found for okay. that. Uh, seventh round pick in 2000, you probably considered him for the spot you just put Ernest in. D-Webb? 
Rob Meyer. Rob Meyer, okay. Seventh round draft pick. I don't spend all that much time predicting or thinking about the impact that a seventh round pick is going to have. Any production they bring, welcome bonus. You know that if you get that out of the guy. Wound up playing here for nine years and was such a crucial part of those Jaguars defenses as a running mate with Stroud and Henderson in their heyday there in the mid-2000s, especially that run from 05 to 07 with all three of those guys. I mean, they were, all three of them, beasts up front, and I'm not sure the other two guys are, they're not the same group without Meyer being the third wheel, you know, for for those guys. But a seventh-round pick in 2000, and when they made that pick, I was, I guarantee I was somewhere going, whoever that is, okay. Yeah, and that's, to me, why, like, he's clearly the best seventh-round pick yeah. this team has made, right? And he's arguably the greatest value draft pick that they've made as Certainly. well. It wasn't a pro bowler, no. but, and, but very good, solid players you've laid out. And for me, like, I at the time they drafted Rob Meyer, I doubt I had an opinion on Rob Meyer. You know, I, yeah. I didn't have a strong enough opinion to be right or wrong. It was I mean, the opinion you have on every seventh-round pick. The reason it's I like, mentioned okay. D-Webb, and, and it wouldn't fit for you going with the guy that outperformed – Mm-hmm. D. Webb was the rare seventh rounder I was excited about, right? Because right? he did make plays, and I'm like, how is D. Webb still available in the seventh round? And it was 2006 when they took him, so I definitely considered him. Uh, but there were other guys I was counting on much, much more than D. Webb. It's it's tough to be too disappointed by the performance of any seventh round. Pick. Absolutely, but but he yeah. was one that at least I remember at the time going, oh okay, that's the direction we're going to go with this whole thing right now. All right, let's get to this uh, list of Jaguar draft needs. Let me bring this up as you guys uh, in your mind here put together what you think the top five needs are for this football team. As I stall, as I, man, why does (laughs) NFL.com make things? Am I wrong about this? Once again, Mm -hmm. I I feel like they've hidden the the link. I I knew I should have emailed myself. A link to this, but I think I can remember what Chad Ryder had as the top five draft needs for this team. I'm pretty sure I've got it in my head. So, uh, give me, give me one of your top five. It, it doesn't matter if you guys repeat each other. Just give me one of your top five. Corner, corner. Give me one of your top five pockets. Receiver, receiver. Number one, Tony. Who you got? Receiver certainly receiver. on my list. Okay, there you go. Chad Ryder didn't have have receiver. I didn't. I wanted to see how long yeah. it took before you both named one of the positions and the one that's going to stand out that he felt like was not among their top five needs. Mm -hmm. Now, he does, you know, a lot of times we say, well, offensive line is a need for the Jaguars, right? And he lists both offensive tackle and interior offensive line. I think a lot of people would list interior offensive line. He's projecting ahead. He's looking at saying, look, you got Gabe Davis, you got Christian Kirk, you got Zay Jones. Is it the best receiving group in the league? No, but – could you play with them today? Yeah, you could, right? And you could play with what you have at offensive tackle. For sure. But what are you going to have at the end of this season? And that's what the draft, in part, is about, is finding that next generation of guys that's mm-hmm. going to come up on your roster and replace some of the guys that you drafted earlier. Uh, he's got O-tackle, interior offensive line. He had corner. Uh, I think he had D-tackle and edge was on there as well. In mm-hmm. fact, he listed edge First, and I guess under the the and I, I like not, I did a list of five, okay. You know, for and I did have edge at five. What did you have for your five? I had corner, wide receiver, yeah, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, edge, offensive tackle, edge. Okay, yeah. yeah a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people would have the same group or mm-hmm. something on offensive line and edge, or if you split it, they might have O tackle interior. And leave edge sure. off. Who'd you have it? Who'd you have for your five pockets? Same as Tony, except flip out offensive tackle for interior O line. Interior O lines. Yeah, yeah. I think th- those are basically the six position groups that we want them to spend the most draft capital on. And I, I hear Prosser this morning talking about oh, they're going to draft the kicker. They may, because it would seem like a Jaguar thing to do. And right. I, like I get it, man. Joey Sly is not anybody that we were clamoring for them to bring in. Neither was Josh Lambeau. Right. Right. I mean, kickers are funny like that, man. I mean, it, Jason Myers, when he left here, good luck, whoever signs that guy. Well, he's been to the Pro Bowl, I think, a couple of times. Yeah, he's been good. Since he's left here. So, kickers are, are like that. I Oh, boy. I, if you find, put it this way, if you do take one, you better hit. As yeah. I was going through this draft list today, Tone Scobie, fifth-round pick, 
Nobody's sitting back there going, man, what a wasted draft pick that was, right? I mean, we love Scobie. He was fantastic, all-time mm-hmm. leading scorer and all that. And um, it was well worth it. I will contend that for what they got out of him, and when you look at the overall rate of first-rounders busting, that the Raiders taking Sebastian Janikowski was not a a draft bust. I don't know if it was the best value they could have got. It was, I don't think – I think he – was a solid for, I mean, for considering how many years he played for them. Yeah. And the fact that basically once you're across midfield, you felt like you were in scoring territory with that guy. He extended it. Uh, that guy's extremely rare, right? And nobody's suggesting the Jags are going to go anywhere near the top of the draft with that. But I have seen those mocks, fifth round, fourth round, with the Jags taking a kicker. I hope that's not the case. But uh, if they do, I hope they get the next Josh Scobie in here. He's going to be here for a decade. And yeah. And uh, make it a set it and forget it kind of position, right? We'll continue the countdown as we work our way through the five draft picks that we feel we were the most wrong about. Who do you feel you were the most wrong about over the years with the Jacksonville Jaguars? A lot of people mentioned in Blaine Gabbert this morning. Felt like he was, uh, as somebody put it, a prototype. I mean, the build was certainly there. There are a lot of things to be excited about. The funny thing about that, a lot of times when you draft a quarterback, that guy's been on your radar for a while. I felt like that one yeah. just kind of hit us out of the blue. Well, and that's the one, you know, we started talking about everyone's list is going to be very personal to them, mm-hmm. right? Because I know how I felt when the Jags drafted Gabbert and how I felt when they drafted Leftwich and how I felt when they drafted Bortles. Like, when they've made those picks, I know how I felt about those players, those picks at the time. That's not what everyone else felt, and that's fine. Like, if you were among that group that was very hopeful, they finally drafted a quarterback, I'm excited about this guy, look at all these different things to fall in love with. If that's how you felt, that's how you felt. I didn't, right? With all three of those guys, when they made the picks, I was like, eh. I hear you. You know, like, I wasn't all that pumped about it. Trevor Lawrence is different, right? Like, if the the floor falls out on Trevor Lawrence, he'll top this list. It'll be so far away. Right, will retire the question. Right. Like, it'll be, like, it'll be Other the guy. Other than Trevor Lawrence. Right. right. Like, that's the kind of, of expectations that I had for Trevor coming in here, and I still think he's going to live up to all those things. You know, like, I still have that hope for that guy. But those other three, you know, it was just like, I hope it works out. You know, that's how I felt, and it's it's nice to see them taking a chance on a quarterback. They need to find an answer at that position. I hope this guy's the answer. And it worked out the way it did. All right. So by the way, I got the writer's list. He did list them in this order. Edge first. Okay. Corner, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, interior offensive line. He didn't mention in his write-up wide receiver, um, but reg- and mentioned that they could add at that position, but did not list that among their top five uh, needs and still wouldn't shock anybody, I don't think, no. if they took one with the 17th pick in the no. draft. Yeah. All right. We'll come back. The countdown continues as we work our way towards the number one guy who we were most wrong about when the Jaguars drafted him, in our personal opinions. And uh, we'll do that coming up next. Uh, Demetrius Harvey on the way in our number two from the Florida Times Union. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. 1010XL, Jaguars Today Tuesday is brought to you by Dream Finders Homes, homes built to fit your lifestyle. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. Jacksonville's home for Florida Gators baseball. The Gators are back on the diamond for a midweek matchup against Florida A&M. Tonight at 6.30 on 1010AM. The Guess Who? Rockin' Jacksonville, Thursday, April 11th. American Catch the Canadian Hitmakers live at Florida Theater. Rock legends, the Guess Who's long-awaited return to Jacksonville. Get your tickets now at Florida Theater Box Office or floridatheater.com. Don't miss a night of legendary rock classics with the Guess Who. Thursday, April 11th at Florida Theater. Produced by Elko Concerts. Let's go! It's time for opening night, and don't you dare miss the Jacksonville Sharks' first home game against the IFL defending champions, the Bay Area Panthers, Saturday, April 6th at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. Kickoff, 7 o'clock. Let's go! Tickets as low as $15. You can't find Saturday family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or go to jacksharks.com. Dust off your boots, grab your cowboy hat for Western Night. Join us at 5 p.m. for Shark Fest, every home game located outside the arena for our pre-game party. 
Help us rock the take as we roll out the 2023 NAL Championship Band. Let's go! Don't miss our opening game. It's this Saturday, April 6th, 7 o'clock. Let's show them what Jax is bringing to the table at the Five Star Veterans Memorial Arena. Be a part of indoor football fun and exciting non-stop action. For tickets as low as $15, call 904-621-0700. Don't forget your cowboy hats. Let's go! Let's go! Hey, it's Matt Hayes. You've heard me praising the quick and easy process of Awaken 180 weight loss. It begins with fitting into clothes you haven't worn in years. Or better yet, buying new clothes because those you have don't fit anymore. Or tightening your belt and realizing you're out of holes. Or running on the treadmill or on the beach or lifting weights like you once did. Or someone seeing you for the first time in months and saying, wow, I don't even recognize you. Or your health drastically changes. Who doesn't want that? The transformation from old to new is the finish line. And Awaken 180 Weight Loss gets you there faster, safer, and easier than any other weight loss program. You're healthy. You're happy. You've made a paradigm life shift. I want everyone to know how easy losing weight can be with Awaken 180 Weight Loss. If I can do it, if Mike Dempsey and Hacker can do it, if more than 21,000 others can do it, you can too. Get your plan, get your personal coach, and get your results by doing what we all did. Choose the solution for weight loss, Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Call 844-346-1800, 844-346-1800, or online at awaken180weightloss.com. Mia here with a shout-out to all property owners looking to spruce up your spaces for the spring. Window Gang's exterior cleaning services will remove stubborn stains, restore windows to a crystal clear shine, and ensure your gutters flow freely. Whether you own a home or business, Window Gang will transform your outdoor space. Call 262-7300 for a free estimate. Don't wait. Let Window Gang bring the sparkle back to your property today. That's 262-7300. Your AC's broke, it ain't no joke Call Florida Home AC Florida Home AC Florida Home AC Florida Home AC FloridaHomeAC.com There are so many ways you can catch me Catch Mia O'Brien on XL Primetime weekdays On Helmets and Heels Tuesday nights And on 1010XL's video and social channels All things Mia are driven by Arlington Toyota It's Mo Time with Mo Bryan I'm here with Clayton Bromberg of Underwoods. Clayton, I've seen ads for diamonds. We see the words all diamonds certified by IGI, EGL, or GIA. The heck does all that mean? David, it's got to be confusing because all those letters represent various diamond grading laboratories. However, it's important to point out that these labs don't issue certificates and they certify nothing. They issue diamond grading reports. Generally speaking, some of the laboratories are considered more accurate than others, and that's why at Underwoods we only use grading reports from the Gemological Institute of America, or GIA, and the American Gem Society Laboratory, or AGSL. Both of these laboratories issue grading reports on diamonds' color, clarity, and carat weight, but on round, brilliant diamonds, the American Gem Society Lab assigns a cut grade composed of proportion, symmetry, and polish. The cut grade can go from the zero ideal to a 10, which is very poor. This allows us to show a customer how these factors will affect a diamond's ability to handle light and overall affect beauty and value. So if you're shopping for a diamond and are interested in seeing the best, Come by Underwoods. Storms are part of every season. Make sure you're protected. Call American Electrical to make sure you have the best in surge protection. Don't lose your home electronics to a lightning strike. Call 737-7770 for American Electrical. Looking to make a great impression? Dylan Denmark here, folks. And when I want to score big, I send flowers or a plant from Jacksonville's best, Cune Flowers. Yeah, man, it's always a good thing to send someone a Cune floral arrangement Cuneflowers.com. Bring your marketing to the next level with 3D Digital, your local video production and digital marketing agency that specializes in ensuring your brand's story is seen, heard, and remembered. Our award-winning team creates professional content that will be launched across multiple platforms to precisely target your audience. Call us at 904-712-4004 or visit 3digital.com to define, design, and deliver exceptional results for your business. Mark Watson with Hardball Creative. Cooler weather is here, so call Hardball and let us put your company logo on some beanie caps. Think about it. Stylish, pom-pom on top, adorable. Hardball Creative. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Jaguars today on 1010XL. 
All right, I got good news for you, Tony. Oh? Well, I don't know if it's news, but uh, I have a good outlook for you. Uh, Ryan Wilson over at CBS Sports predicts Michael Penix Jr. will be taken inside the top 15 selections it's all good. in this month's yep. NFL draft. I say this month's NFL draft as mm -hmm. we are three weeks and two days away. That would be phenomenal. 17 yeah. pick with five quarterbacks going in front of you? That's yeah. all right. Bring it on. I mean, you why not you six? Get a few in it. Why not six? <laughs> right? Why not say go? Everybody needs a quarterback. Everybody needs a good Wait until 18 backup. to get a quarterback? What's wrong with Come you? Come on. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, here we go. Let's r roll through it quickly for what it's worth, and they're not worth all that much. Although, we do like our draft guys, including mm -hmm. Mr. Tony Pauline from Sports Kitty. Yeah. He's going to join us tomorrow on the program. 1120 pockets, is that right? Correct. By the way, I'm burying the lead here. Dylan Denmark for Kuhn Flowers. <laughs> what is going on, man, huh? Got an email. I said yes. Now I'm on the air. That's how now, it works. So you got a, a floral sponsorship. Yeah. You know, when you got to find that female companionship, mm -hmm. that could come in handy, brother. I guess. I didn't even think about it that way. But... I'm just saying right there. Ladies, we got a guy <laughs> who can set you up with bouquets left and right. You would think so. Yeah. Just just throwing it out there. Just uh -huh. throwing it out there. Anyway, I was like, wow, I'm still in Denmark. We know who you are, Pockets. <laughs> you don't have to tell us and recognize you immediately. Uh, Caleb Williams goes number one of the Chicago Bears, Tony. Ryan Wilson's shaking this one up right at the top. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Uh, Jaden Daniels going number two to Washington. Okay. Stunning. Uh, Drake May going three to New England. This one's a little bit of a, a twisty. Malik Neighbors. Head of Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay. Uh, I've had Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. closely graded throughout the draft process, says Ryan Wilson of CBS Sports. But after Neighbors' impressive Pro Day numbers, wait a minute. Pro Day doesn't move these guys off the board, Tony, I'm told. Mm -hmm. Until it does. The film, the film, the it's film. It's all film, right, Pockets? Yeah. That's what they say. Until, until the, you do the Pro Day. Until they do the Pro Day and they're the impressed combine. and they move them up the board. Uh, I'm giving him the slightest of edges here. Both receivers are special, says Wilson. I feel like. He had the most boring, you know, like right now, and I'm not saying it's, it's wrong. Williams, Daniels, Drake May, it's the most boring one, two, three you can have right now, right? I mean, pretty much, right? Yeah. So having Malik Neighbors makes you go, oh, okay, well, this maybe this will be different in some <laughs> fashion. Uh, Minnesota then trades up to five and takes J.J. McCarthy. Okay. One spot ahead of the Giants are like, we ain't moving Taking Marvin Harrison Jr. What do you think? Yeah. Best case scenario for the Giants, says Wilson, who stand pat and have Harrison fall into their laps. Why didn't Balky get it done, man? Balky can't get a deal done with the Giants, man. Well, the Giants are probably like, oh, we ain't making a deal. Are you kidding yeah. me? Got, what deal? We got the yeah. best receiver in the draft, if they feel that way about mm -hmm. him. Uh, Joe Alt to Tennessee. See that all the time. The Notre Dame tackle. Jared Verse to Atlanta. Pass rush there. They have a massive need for yeah. pass rush. Yeah, that team. I saw someone doing a mock draft yesterday. I forget where it was, but they had the Jags trading up to Atlanta spot, and they wound to get up pass rush to get neighbors. Had to get dropped neighbors. to eight. Okay. Well, they did have a pre-workout visit with them. They did. So I could see that being yeah. a possibility. And the I didn't see what the cost was on that, but they did have the Jags making that trade to eight with Atlanta the, to get the that tough done. thing of seeing him get to eight is Arizona, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, they could trade out, right? And if a team trades up for a quarterback, Arizona will drop back. If it's Minnesota, they're going to drop back outside the top 10, for sure. instance. But keep in mind, a few years ago, Arizona made that trade back, and then they made that trade back up. Remember, they dropped yeah. from like three outside the top 10 and jumped back up to six. Yes. Took an offensive lineman. Um, you've got them. you got the Chargers, who have jettisoned Keenan Allen and Mike Williams this offseason. And mm -hmm. while they spent a first-round pick, on Quentin Johnston last year, and they have Josh Palmer, you don't pick fifth overall all that often. All right? So they could take one. The Giants themselves could take one right there. I don't think Tennessee's going that route with Probably the not. money they invested. But that's yeah. three teams in the top six to think that the top one of the top two is going to slide by all three. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Hard to imagine. Yeah. But hey. If it happens, it let's go. Keeps us coming back yeah. for clicks. Uh, so, Verse went one spot ahead of Dallas Turner in this one. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that, but, you know, I, I'm not, again, not a film junkie, but I think most people have Turner ahead of Verse uh, at this point. But anyway, two pass rushers back-to-back. -back. Roma Dunze then goes to the Jets. 
uh, had a Jets reporter on on Sirius XM last week, and they said, I mean, Roma Dunze is a dream, but they're going to, if Dunze is off the board, they're going to have a real hard time passing up Brock Bowers. Mm-hmm. Like, why? You think about it. What did Aaron Rodgers complain about for years, right? That delayed gratification, right? You're not taking the right guys. You're not getting the offensive weapons. You don't think they're going to, they don't know. This might be it. This might be the one hurrah with Aaron yeah. Rodgers this year. Even though he says he's going to play multiple years, Brock Bowers step in and improve that position immediately oh, yeah. for them. So that makes a ton of sense. J.C. Latham going to the Chargers at 11. This Remember, in this one, they traded back with mm-hmm. Minnesota. Uh, let's see. Terry and Arnold, first corner off the board, goes to Denver. And then the Raiders taking Michael Penix Jr. New head coach Antonio Pierce was in Baton Rouge last week to see Jaden Daniels and some pretty good wide receivers. But instead, the Raiders stay put and take – Michael Penix Jr. here at number 13. All right. <laughs> I love those kind of reports. Right. Like, here's where the coach was last he week. He was looking at something completely different. It has nothing some other to guy. do with what I'm right. telling you they're going to do. He's going to yeah. pick here. Like, I, I, had a, I needed a nugget. Okay. And I didn't really have a nugget to put here. Uh-huh. So I put that nugget and said at the end, oh, yeah, I'm going to take it Penix. Uh, Olu Fashanu, Penn State tackle, falls to 14 in this one. Quinion Mitchell to the Colts, and then Troy. Fautanu, which would mean Tali Fwanga is available right. in this draft. So is Brock Bowers. Uh, so is Jackson Powers Johnson. The Jags go Byron Murphy the second. Okay. And that, which is whatever. You yeah. know, uh, Byron Murphy, the best defensive lineman in this class. This is what Wilson's saying. I, I presume he's taking edge rush out of this class. He's got two in the top ten. And he could end up going higher than this. The Jags addressed other positional needs early in free agency, even with the addition of Eric Armstead. Murphy makes a lot of sense here. Uh, Bowers goes with the next pick. Then Johnny Newton, the other first mid first round defensive tackle prospect. Tali Fuanga, the offensive tackle out of Oregon State, who we just mentioned. Jackson Powers Johnson, Cooper DeGene, Brian Thomas Jr. This is like Jaguars grab bag right mm-hmm. here. Like they're all we've. Con- I think we've convinced ourselves that that is a. Uh, target-rich group for the team. Uh, so we'll see. I heard, uh, was it Jeff this morning talking about, he, you know, he's hearing A.D. Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell. In this one, he goes 32nd to uh, Kansas City okay. in the first round. So anyway, just uh, another one to take a peek at if you're so inclined. And uh, I'm all for, and I think we all are, as many quarterbacks as possible. Get him in the there. Top 16 picks. All right, why don't we go around the rest of the National Football League? Now, Gems Around the NFL, brought to you by Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jack's Beach. The Houston Texans have signed defensive end Derek Barnett and linebacker Neville Hewitt. Barnett was a first-round pick by Philly in 2017, was waived by the Eagles last year. The Texans claim Barnett on waivers. He wound up with two and a half sacks in six games there in Houston, added another in their wild-card win over Cleveland last season, now re-signed. There by the Texans. Philadelphia signed safety Reed Blankenship to a one-year extension, which will get him $3.95 million in guaranteed money over the next two seasons. Pittsburgh keeps adding to their quarterback room, this time signing Kyle Allen. Washington signed quarterback Jeff Driscoll and running back Jerry Jeremy McNichols. The lawyer for Kansas City wide receiver Rashi Rice said on Monday that his client is cooperating with authorities. We mentioned yesterday that police in Dallas were interested in talking to Rice after his potential involvement in a driving incident on Saturday that resulted in four cars crashing while two cars, one potentially being driven by Rice, were potentially racing. Two people were treated for injuries at the scene of the crashes. Two more taken to a local hospital to be treated for minor injuries. The two drivers fled the scene. Former NFL cornerback Vontae Davis was found deceased in his South Florida home on Monday. Police have already said that no foul play is suspected in Davis's death, but that the investigation is ongoing. Davis played 10 years in the NFL. He was a first round pick by Miami out of Illinois in 2009, played six years for the Indianapolis Colts where he was selected to -to back-to-back Pro Bowls in 2015 and 16. Davis walked away from football during a week one game and what wound up being his final season, his first in Buffalo in 2018. He walked away at halftime, right? Like, yeah. just decided at halftime, this is no. I, I made a it's terrible done. mistake. Yeah. I should not have played one more season. Well, uh, rest in peace, Vontae Davis, man. Wow, that was a 
obviously surprising. No doubt. Anytime somebody goes, the older I get, Tony, the younger that sounds, uh, quite frankly. All right, uh, Pockets, why don't we continue the countdown? Number three. Counting down the five Jacksonville Jaguar draft picks that we were the most wrong about in either direction. Either uh, mm-hmm. they were better than we thought or didn't live up to what we thought. So, on to number three for me, Tony. I go to the fifth round of the 2013 NFL Draft. Pick okay. 135 overall and a man named Shoelace. <laughs> Denard Robinson was one of the most fun college players to watch in my lifetime, right? Had season, he had a 1,700-yard rushing season as a quarterback yeah. with 14 touchdowns. Next year, he ran for 1176 with 16 touchdowns. Next year, he ran for 1266 with seven more touchdowns. 42 rushing scores in his career. And then think of all the trick plays we're going to run, Tom. The offensive weapon. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's, we don't know where he's going to line up. Mm-hmm. He's going to do all these things. You're not going to be able to account for him. You're not going to be able to stop him. He can throw the football. He'll be a great return man because he's so good in the open field. He's going to do it all. Except he didn't. <sighs> Except he didn't. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, uh, great guy. And uh-huh. who doesn't love Shoelace, man? He's phenomenal. And that's around the spot in the draft where you take a shot on something. Absolutely. Like that. But yeah. he was, and, and, and so the typical fifth round pick, I would say most of them don't fail to live up to my expectations because I don't have high expectations uh, for fifth round picks. Yeah. This guy, I at least had high hopes for, if mm-hmm. not expectations. So I was definitely wrong about the impact that Denard Shoelace. Robinson would make with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and apparently a lot of you who've submitted your top fives uh, agree with me this sure. morning. Who you got at number three? Uh, for me, I it, this would he's lower on my list than he would be for someone else who works here in the building. I know that for sure. LaVisca okay. Chenault. Mm. Uh, second round pick in 2000. Looking at you, Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Watching Chenault's college highlights at Colorado could not have had me more excited. I, I wasn't as pumped as E.T. was on Visca. Uh, but I wasn't so far behind his enthusiasm that I couldn't see it, right, uh, for LaVisca Chanel. I thought the Jags were getting their Debo. I did. And after the way his rookie year ended, I remained hopeful that they had gotten their Debo. It took his second year to make it clear it's not going to happen. And before the third year even began for LaVisca Chanel, they trade him to Carolina, and the whole dream is evaporating before your eyes of what he could potentially be for this team. But kick, kick it on the field with that team. Right. Like, I couldn't have been more excited about them getting LaVisca Chenault when they got him there in the second round in 2020. I still would contend that today, right now, if you just need a receiver to break one tackle, top five in the league. If not, We talked no, he, about it. But you know those first two years here, I never see him Don't, on the ground. Ne- he would he'd get knocked out of bounds, yeah. and he'd stand there looking down at the guy on the ground yeah. who pushed him out of bounds because it was so hard to knock him off balance. Debo might be the V guy in yeah. the league, you know, uh, and he has so many. You know, there's so many opportunities. Yeah. But on but a it was fun basis, even his rookie year. He didn't excel his rookie year, but every time he got the ball, I would. Look, like sit up in my chair. It's like, what's this guy's going to bounce off of it? Right. Like, what's going to happen on this play? I know it's not going to end with him getting tackled. What's going to happen on the play uh, here with Lavisca Chenault? It just didn't turn into anything. Who you got, Dylan? Marquise Lee. Hmm. He was a stud of studs at college. Man, 2011, he had 11 touchdowns, 1100 yards. His sophomore year. Uh, had 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns. Wasn't so good as junior year. Now, he won the Bolitnikoff Award he as did. a sophomore, yeah, though, Yeah, he right? did. Yes. He was Pac-12 Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year. He was even a long jumper. I didn't know, even know he did track uh, his junior year in college and then never really did anything uh, in col- or here in Jacksonville. Injuries, never really performed with no, he anything didn't. close well, and the, the, Right, did and the in injury college. that he suffered, like, he, it was at that point, I think the writing was on the wall. Mark Easley was not going to be this huge breakout player. I think he's a good one. I, I left him off my list, Tony, although I consider him because the mm-hmm. injury did impact him greatly, I think. Uh, you know, the the torn ACL in the preseason of all things. But no doubt, we, we talked to Dave Caldwell right after that draft, and they thought they were going to draft Allen Robinson with that pick. That's yeah. who they were targeting with that pick. So if you think teams don't target a specific player, even, you know, 35, 40 picks deep into a draft. They do sometimes. They were targeting Allen Robinson. And Dave was like, we thought there's no way Marquise Lee is going to be there for us. We thought he was going in the first round. There's tons of talk about Marquise Lee being a first-round pick 
Uh, and then, of course, obviously they traded back in, I believe, and took Allen Robinson. By the way, I should correct myself. Somebody did it for me, but I should uh, throw myself on the mercy of the court of public opinion. Josh Evans, a sixth-round pick. For some reason, I always get in my head that mm-hmm. he was a seventh-round pick. Thank you very much. He was a sixth-round pick. Still a great value pick, yeah. in my opinion, uh, for the Jags, one of my favorite late-round picks that they have made. So uh, my 5-4-3, in terms of guys I was wrong about, I was uh, too high on Mike Pearson at five, too low on Ernest Wilford at four, too high on Denard Robinson at three. Yours? Uh, five, Quincy four, three. Williams at five, mm-hmm. Rob Meyer at four, LaVisca Chenault three. Pockets? Uh, D.D. Westbrook, Dante Fowler, Marquise Lee, five, so, four, three. No, no duplications so far. Mm-hmm. We'll see if we can keep that up when we get to the top two. Uh, that's still uh, my in Denmark. only risky for- one is I don't know where my number one might be in y'all's top two. Like, that's the only oh. one that I'm like, he might be on somebody else's list. My number two is not on anybody else's list. Okay. Well, we will endeavor to find out who mm-hmm. those players are as we go into the second hour of Jaguars today. We're about 15 minutes or so away. Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe 25 minutes, uh, if I can do math here. On uh, Demetrius Harvey joining us from the Florida Times Union, talking all aspects of Jacksonville Jaguar football. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, and Dylan Denmark here with you on 1010XL 92.5 FM. 1010XL, Jaguars Today, Tuesday. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. Brought to you by Dream Finders Homes, official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, this is Russell Crowe, and you're listening to the best sports radio in the world. 1010XL, Jacksonville Sports Radio. 1010XL, 92.5 FM. What a great way to start spring with a cigar tasting from Perdomo Cigars. Join Tobacco Cove Saturday, April 6th from 1 to 4 p.m. for a tasting extravaganza featuring Perdomo cigars handmade in Esteli, Nicaragua. With food, drinks, and specials on cigars, this is a great way to become acquainted with the quality and value that is Perdomo cigars. Tobacco Cove on Bay Meadows Road. We are more than a cigar store. We are an experience. Did you know Prime Roofing manufactures, fabricates, and installs their metal roofs? If you're thinking about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Schedule an estimate today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? The answer next. We all know that saving money on items like homeowner's insurance can be done. Ask your agent about the new Southern Oak Insurance deductible options. It'll save money for you. Our family protecting yours, Southern Oak Insurance. Although classified as a vegetable by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, tomatoes are actually a fruit since they're technically berries that develop from a single flower. Southern Oak Insurance, our family protecting yours. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Mueller Air Conditioning presents... Are you cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice aroni? Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. It's surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Hey, it's Tony from Tony D's Pizza. If you love our pizza and pasta dishes, let us cater an event for you. Family function or office parties, we can deliver you an amazing Italian meal. Remember, it's not just pizza at Tony D's. Bay Meadows in 295. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. 
use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508. 904-999-1508. That's loanpronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update, brought to you by Kuhn Flowers. Spring practice is underway for the defending ACC champion Florida State Seminoles. Going into year five of the Mike Norvell era, expectations are high in Tallahassee. Coach Norvell was very pleased with where his team is at so far this spring after having their first scrimmage. Norvell gave his thoughts on where he feels they are at. I thought it was a uh good opportunity for guys to see exactly you know where they are with you know, no coaches no extra assistance um, you know, having to go out there and communicate operate understand the play that you have but also you know the, the details and the fundamentals for the most part I thought the guys did a really good job of understanding the play um, you know, it was it was definitely you know, I thought it was a lot better than what I really expected you know in the understanding of what to do we've got to continue to improve on how to do it it's 76 degrees at 11 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Everything you need to know about the Jags. Jaguars today on 1010XL. You know, we're uh, into Zapruder film level coverage already of the Rishi Rice street racing incident <laughs> yeah. right now. I mean, um, is it, though, that easy to get away? Like, if you just don't admit you were driving the car, if there's no video of you? You know, I, I guess, like, they're saying a lot of things could happen here. If he was driving the car, there's an accident involving serious injuries, there could be... Uh, felony charges could land you five years in jail yeah. in the state of Texas. Now, how likely it is that he would get that, I have no idea or anything approaching that. But, you know, Henry Ruggs is in prison right now, and obviously sure. that accident he was in street racing led to someone's death. But the burden's on the investigation to prove that he was behind the wheel. he was driving, wheel. right? Yeah. Now, the Lamborghini company said, yeah, he leased the car for us. By the way, who's paying for this? Like, we've not heard from Rishi Rice mm-hmm. since – this, uh, as they've been contacted by the media. If you don't know, he leased a Lamborghini. He was racing a Corvette. Mm-hmm. They crashed. People were hurt. And then everybody fled the scene. Yep. But they're saying, you know, no one there. Can eyewitness put him behind the wheel? Well, he 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 leased the car. He signed an agreement that he'd be the only one driving the car. It would seem to me he's kind of responsible for what happens with that car. Yeah, but I'm not sure – Legally, I understand. That I, I, that's why I right. said it would seem to me yeah. that he would like be logically, respo- we all know Rashi was driving the car. Being responsible and being legally culpable yeah, are different very things. different things, right? You know, like it's a it's a legal standard. It's not what you know; it's what you can prove, right? Well, and that yeah. th- that's my point, though. Like, okay, so four people are in a car. We crash into a tree. Yeah. Okay. All four of us get out. Everyone claims I wasn't driving. Mm-hmm. They can't prosecute anyone for that. Uh, they can, they don't know who they would prosecute. I feel like there'd be jurisdictions where they find a way to like charge everybody. They try to talk to all of them individually. Like there may be right. some statute under which they can th- they can put the pressure on you. This is what we're coming after you for, right? Who was driving the car, right? Like I think they can legally come at it from that angle. Who is we're, this? Is what we think? Who was driving the car to try to put pressure on somebody? One of the four people to say. That's the guy that was driving the car. Sure, they need somebody to, to right. Idea. But if none of them crumble, then I don't know legally what they can do except whatever that minimum statute might be. Which I don't is, know. It's kind of crazy. But then you hear like now I get my legal knowledge from Law and Order, but mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? Like you you hear like okay, two people, one of them killed somebody. This guy says I say Tony did it. Tony says I did it. Yep. We both just get off for murder. Good luck. Yeah. You know, from a proving it standpoint, good luck, right? If they're both pro- willing I, to but, stick to that, but story. I feel like yeah. like there are ways where they would get a jury to go. Right. Well, they're 
between the two of them, they're both they're, guilty of something, yeah. and I'm just going to convict there them both. There are enough levers within the legal system that they can put pressure on the one that is lying to stop lying. Apparently, there's dash cam video, by mm-hmm. the way, uh, and you see the accident, and there's video of him. I don't know if it's from the dash cam or something else where two people emerge from the Lamborghini, both on the passenger side, but he's the second one out. Mm-hmm. Unless he's climbing over somebody's lap, I mean, you know, we'll see. And, of course, they say uh, he's cooperating fully with authorities but hasn't spoken to the authorities. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, lawyer, I mean, yeah. like, I get it. You're you're protecting your own interest. You're allowed to do that. But then when you make a statement that I'm cooperating fully with the authorities, I don't think that means I lawyered up and I will not talk to you. Yeah. That doesn't sound like full cooperation. It's within your legal rights, not suggesting it's not. But uh, yeah, we have amendments in place. You don't oof. have to testify against yourself. No, you don't have to do no, that. you do not. Yeah. All right. Uh, we do have to testify as to the five draft picks we felt like we were the most wrong about. Yes. In Jaguar history. So let's get back to, to the countdown with number two. Number two. See, Tony. Yeah. Um, like I said, I don't expect this guy to be on anybody else's list. This okay. is me reacting to it. First round pick in 2020. Same year as LaVisca Chenault. Caleb Von Chase on. Uh, I was pumped for Chase on when they made the pick with Chase on. I got over it after just one year, uh, but when they landed him, I was really excited. I thought he was the second best edge in that draft class behind only Chase Young uh, and was hoping that they would be in position to get Javon Kinlaw, I can remember that year, but he had already been drafted. I was thrilled that Chase on was, quote, falling into their hands, right? Like it, it felt like it was all working out for them to help that edge rush that year. That first one sack season was enough for me to go, whoop, that was a mistake. Right, like I was done with it after one year with Chase on. I wasn't expecting some big development over the next couple of years and let go of it pretty quickly after that first season. But I, I was all about Kalewan the year that they drafted him there in the first round, and it crumbled. And at least he finished his rookie contract here. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him credit for that. But that's that only because some. it was cheap enough that they didn't want to cut him. Uh, is what it felt like to me for the last couple of years with Kayla Von Chase on. We'll see what he, if he turns into anything going somewhere else like we just talked about with Quincy, you know, in number five. But I, I doubt that's how it's going to work out for Chase on, that he's going to go somewhere else and be an all-pro level player uh, anywhere in the league. Well, so far we've, uh, between three of us, named ten picks, and none of them have been duplicated mm-hmm. uh, pockets. Can you keep the roll going? Who's number two? Yeah, Luke Jokel. I remember this guy. I remember when we drafted him, like, oh, he's going to be our future. And he was not our future. I'm looking at it here on Wikipedia. It says, Pro Football Focus viewed him as one of the worst offensive tackles in the NFL in 2014 mm. and held responsible for eight quarterback sacks. He was number two pick in the draft. Yes, he was. Ahead of Lane Johnson. Who yeah, we had witnesses on later. that one. Yeah. <laughs> we all knew who was responsible on the quarterback sacks that year. Yeah. That's for sure. No doubt. All right, Luke Joe. I, and I have seen, and this is why I thought it was interesting with the different generations of fans. Like, mm-hmm. for Dylan's age, Luke Jokel was going to be that left tackle. Yeah. You know, maybe not the next Baselli. You know what I mean? But, like, that next anchor. There's a little bit of all that. Like, left tackle was taken in the first couple rounds of the draft in Jacksonville since Tony. There's always Eugene been, Monroe, right? Like that little bit of is he the next yeah. guy? I mean, the number five guy, Mike Pearson, on my list was literally called Baby Baselli. Yeah, like not so, everyone gets the Baby Baselli thing, right. but it's it's like written in everyone's mind with it when a guy gets taken at that position. We got to find our Baselli, right. this generation's Baselli. You know, well, that's if they part were of the easy process. to find Hall yeah. of Fame left tackles, we we'd get a lot of them. Yes, we would. We'd have um, we'd have a stockpile. Of Hall of Fame left tackles. All right, so uh, Luke Jokel for you. Uh, number two for me, I, I put him on yesterday as the number one most foolish pick. Look, I, I can't deny I was excited about Matt Jones when mm-hmm. the Jags took him. I thought he was going to be good. <laughs> Told Del Rio, take him. We made a promo that we ran for months after that. Jack said, who do you want? I want Matt Jones. With the 20 for whatever pick it was, uh, the Jaguars take Matt Jones. Woo! Oh, yeah. His 21st pick is what it was in uh, 2005. Party time. Yeah. Party time. Thought he was going to be fantastic. If this guy, they can't lay a finger on him in the SEC, Tony, in the open mm-hmm. field, what are they going to do with Matt Jones when we actually teach him how to play receiver in this National Football League? So, uh, yep, big whiff, obviously, super excited, and um, 
didn't pan out for a wide, no. wide, yeah. wide variety of reasons. Never forget one time Matt Jones, one of, he goes, uh, I said, um, hey, uh, can I get you for a few minutes after practice? He goes, yeah, I'll do it if you walk with me to my car. Oh, no problem. And then we got to the car. He goes, thanks, man. I didn't want to have to stop and sign those autographs for those people. You Yikes. lousy bum. You have you have no career, and yeah. you got three people out here that would love to get your autograph, and you'd rather pretend to be. It was like the the nowadays you just hold a cell phone to your ear and walk by somebody or so, or just have an earbud in and act like you're in a conversation. But Does him playing catch with the guy in the stands make up for that? No. Not not well, not to those three people unless they were one of those uh, one of those three was somebody I mean just sit, like I didn't know what was going on I'm just like oh okay sure I'll I'll walk and talk I was without give you some weed or something well maybe I was hoping you know but uh, I, I was like <laughs> why why can't we just stand here for like three minutes this will be over real quick all right I'll walk and talk with you fine it'll sound a little weird but uh, mm-hmm. and he's like yeah thanks man it's, uh, these people these people mm-hmm. there are three people. And they would, I mean, you should, oh, my gosh. I'm sure there are still people in Arkansas that, you know, bow at the altar of Matt Jones. Uh-huh. But I, I just, like, man, that was just so yeah, that's weak. classless. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, man? You should be doing a backflip that anybody cares about your signature or anything Absolutely. about you at that point in time. So, anyway, we've done 12 picks between the three of us and not a single duplication, will that hold up through our final uh, selection here? The top five picks we were the most wrong about in Jacksonville Jaguar draft history. We got uh, Demetrius Harvey on the other side. I don't know what uh, if Demetrius has got one in mind. We'll ask him who his top guy is, mm-hmm. but um, we'll talk all aspects of Jaguar football as we're three weeks and two days away from the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. With Tony Smith and Dylan Denmark, I'm Mike Dempsey. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Hey, folks, Mike Dempsey for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. How do you like to awaken and still look like the fantastic physique you had when you lost all that weight is still there in the mirror waiting for you? That's Awaken 180's promise. Not only will you lose the weight, and trust me, from all the people I know that have tried Awaken 180, anyone who's actually adhere to the plan. Every single one of them has had tremendous success, but the great part is once you lose that weight, you keep it off. I am living proof of that since last September, all through October, November, December, January, February, March, now into April. Over half a year, I've kept the weight off with Awaken 180 with free support for life. It's a fantastic program. It's not a crash diet. There's no surgery. There are no medications to take. Learn how to eat and eat to lose weight. 844-346-1800 is the number for Awaken 180 Weight Loss. That's 844-346-1800. Become the next Awaken 180 success story. You can get started by going online to awaken180weightloss.com. It's Jaguars Today Tuesday. Brought to you by Dream Finders Homes from the JOI Studios at 1010XL. JOI, where the pros go. He calls himself the truth teller. Find out why. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Go into the night every night with Rick Ballou. Keep your friends close, but your enemies close. On 1010XL. Here's Linda Beaver. Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet have just received a special allocation of new vehicles directly from the factory. Not 10, not 20, but hundreds of new vehicles with special savings that haven't been seen in years. Every new vehicle available in your favorite color and option as far as the eye can see. Plus, get our exclusive 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty with every new car purchase. Hurry to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville before the best deals are gone. Crosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver, and that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so, and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, there is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. 
John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, I, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. At DuckDuckRooter, we understand plumbing issues can be a real inconvenience for your building or business, and we're here to help. We can handle all kinds of plumbing jobs, including broken pipes, clogged drains, line jetting, installing water heaters, and full repipes. Need a camera inspection or a smoke test? Yes, DuckDuckRooter does that too. Plus, our lift station services include inspections, monitoring, cleaning, and repairs. When you're stuck, call the duck. 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Leon Sursa here, Jaguar legend and three-time national champion. Are you ready to elevate your game and dominate on the gridiron? Our elite offensive line camp is designed for young athletes who aspire to push their limits, refine their skills, and become the very best. It's called the Lineman Life. Sunday, April 14th, D1 training on Beach Boulevard. Whether you are aiming to make a starting lineup or a college scholarship, this camp is for you. Spots are limited, so secure your spot now. Go to eventbrite.com, the Lineman Life dash offensive line camp. Enter promo code 1010 and get $25 off. Greatness awaits. American Electrical, Northeast Florida's highest rated electricians, is hiring, and they're looking for people to train for careers. It's not just job training. They're giving you a license that no one can take away from you, training you for jobs that are always in demand and will offer you a peace of mind financially and for the future. Once you know a trade, you'll always be employable. All the details are at American-Electrical.com, and with their American Electrical Academy, if you're selected, you'll learn the electrical trade absolutely free of charge. American Electrical Contractors. Powered by professionalism. Extra Large Radio, 1010 XL. Good friends and great memories. Everybody hopes to have a bunch of them. The best way to make more is when you're out for a good time, keep an eye on your friends and make sure everyone gets home safe. Anheuser Busch reminding you to always drink responsibly. Let's go! It's time for opening night, and don't you dare miss the Jacksonville Sharks' first home game against the IFL defending champions, the Bay Area Panthers, Saturday, April 6th at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. Kickoff, 7 o'clock. Let's go! Tickets as low as $15. You can't find Saturday family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or go to jacksharks.com. Dust off your boots, grab your cowboy hat for Western night. Join us at 5 p.m. for Shark Fest, every home game located outside the arena for our pre-game party. Help us rock the tank as we roll out the 2023 NAL Championship Band. Let's go! Don't miss our opening game. It's this Saturday, April 6th, 7 o'clock. Let's show them what Jax is bringing to the table at the Five Star Veterans Memorial Arena. Be a part of indoor football fun and exciting non-stop action. For tickets as low as $15, call 904-621-0700. Don't forget your cowboy hats. Let's go! Let's go! This is Joe C. from XL Primetime and stoked to crank up the 9 after 5 once again at the Golf Club of Southampton. Every Wednesday, a little after 5, the gang at Southampton will be hosting us with a new game, and I'm inviting you to be a part of it. Now, through the summer stretch, break up the week with a little hump day fun every Wednesday. Call 287-PLAY to get on the tee sheet. There'll be food afterwards and prizes, including playing for a membership at the Golf Club of Southampton. Call 287-PLAY and hit the tee with Joe C. Frank Frangie here. I was born and raised in Jacksonville, and I love living here. But I also know how bad bugs are in Florida. So I trust Orange Environmental Services to handle all my pest control needs because they've got the best technicians and effective treatment. Their name may be Orange, but they think green. Orange Environmental has been serving the First Coast for over 50 years, and they now offer complete lawn maintenance services. Call Orange Environmental Services for peace of mind from bug problems today. Call them at 272-3284. That's 272-3284. Looking for a new or used firearm? Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jack's Beach will get you locked and loaded. New firearms coming in weekly and always looking for used guns online at beachesjewelryandpawn.com. It's presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the all-pro roofing phone line. Jaguars today on 1010XL. All right, getting down to business here. Three weeks, two days, round one of the NFL draft. Uh, it is a seven-round draft. They're still doing rounds two through seven, Tone? Uh, yeah, that After Friday and Saturday. We yeah. still get to make selections. Mm-hmm. Still get to focus on them. Yes. Although, uh, 
you know, we get it. You know, it's it's tough to know who's even going to be available at right. 17. Like, if it's hard to lock in at 17, good luck at 150. You 48, know? for that matter, <laughs> you know? or anything else. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if anyone can lock in what the Jaguars' plans are, it would be Demetrius Harvey of the Florida Times Union. Good morning, Demetrius. How are you, buddy? Good morning. I'm doing well. And uh, the best thing about mock drafts is you can take whatever player you want. It, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really hurt the, the mix. I love people saying – you know, they'll send me stuff that, hey, I got so-and-so at pick whatever. I made this trade as if, oh, sure. Well, then <laughs> if Balky can't pull off the exact same deal that Way some mock draft simulator allowed you to do to move up from the fourth round into the top five overall picks, then he is a bump. So. Failure. <laughs> That's the way yeah. it goes, brother. Hey, uh, speaking of failures, I know Dylan prepped you on this one, but – um, it, it can come from any era. It doesn't have to be the number one guy. Just give us a guy that the Jags have drafted historically that you feel like you were dead wrong about, whether you were too low on that player or, as is often the case with us and the Jags, too high on a guy. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I think there's a lot of choices um, in at least one direction. But, you know, the, the, the one player that stood out in my mind, at least, was Miles Jack. I don't know about you guys, but I remember going into that draft – uh, thinking that Miles was going to be a sensational player. And, you know, I, I thought he should have been taken in the top five, and the fact that he had dropped to the second round was like, I couldn't believe he was there. You know, I think that that, that was sort of the pick that I missed on the most, I think uh, I think most people did. I yeah. certainly had him there. That's you know, a good one. I, I mean, he was, he was talking about his top five overall pick. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're going through our top five. I, I would have had him at six on my list. Okay. And, you know, me personally, I'm right there with you, Demetrius. Like, I was mm-hmm. so high on Miles Jack in that <laughs> process. Uh, and when they were able to get him in the second round, I was all kinds of pumped. And while we're talking, you know, reacting to picks they've made, then let's react to the picks they made last year before we get into some of the conversation with what we expect them to maybe do here in three weeks. What Jaguars second-year player do you think will have the biggest impact for the team this season? Yeah, I think that um, Tank Bigsby. I think that they, they, they didn't really get to utilize him last year. Um, that was their own making. And then also, you know, he had some fluky stuff happen, obviously, with the interceptions and the, and the fumble. One of the fumbles was sort of uh, everybody would have fumbled in that scenario sort of situation to me. Um, so I, I do think that Tank Bigsby, you know, given his production, I think it was only 100 and something yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I think that he's, he's definitely rearing to be the best um, out of that class in terms of making that next jump. I, I just can't see uh, many other players right now that I would project further. Maybe Antonio Johnson. Man, look, I get it. When you have short yardage carries, that's going to bring your average carry down. And he did have some, but 50 carries for 132 yards. Yeah. I mean, that is just over two and a half a pop. That is just miserable for Tank Bigsby last year, Demetrius. It is, and, and and to be fair to him, uh, the the entire offensive line, the entire running sure. game was 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 miserable. Um, and you know, I think that having you know coming in as a rookie, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, you know, they fired the the, the the running backs coach, not to say it was his fault, but you know, there, there's a lot of mitigating uh, circumstances. I think that goes along with him. Uh, that gives me a little bit more courage to say that he's going to be the next guy to jump. Well, let's talk about the next guy in that draft, which was Ventrell Miller. What do you think they're – are they just hoping to get a healthy season and see where the chips fall, or do you think there's a, a vision in their mind of what he will turn into for this football team? So I, I, I think last year they were going in with the idea of perhaps Ventrell takes over where um, Shaq Quarterman is. And so, you know, that's sort of a natural progression in my opinion now. You know, Shaq is probably most likely not going to be brought back to the team as a free agent, and you have Ventrell sort of going in there – as that next linebacker up. I do know that Caleb Johnson, um, when he re-signed, you know, he's given the opportunity to compete in that room too. So, you know, he's another guy that can come in and sort of uh, be that backup, you know, whatever string um, linebacker. I don't think that there's any sort of plan. At least we haven't heard from the defensive coaches enough to know how much of a plan they have for Ventrell, how they're going to plan to use him on, uh, on defense. But I do know that, you know, their plan last year was for him to be on special teams. I think that they view him highly as a guy who could compete on special teams. His his speed, um, at least at that level, is, is, is high. So, you know, I, I think that he's a guy that um, they, they viewed as a special teams player who can maybe you know, develop and sort of that's where he's at right now. You know, coming off the Achilles, it's so tough to tell. What did you make of the Foyer-Lewican extension that got done on Friday? 
Yeah, that caused a lot of people to uh, get a little upset, and and I feel like the the extension meant to me at least that. You know, Chad Muma, who I thought would be the heir apparent um, to either Foyer or if Devin Lloyd didn't work out, um, perhaps he would be able to slide in there. I thought that that was sort of an indictment on, on the, their evaluation of him or at least how much he's played or how well he's played so far. Um, because I, I just feel as though at that position especially, you don't necessarily want to be paying, um, you know, upwards of $20 million in cap hit, um, you know, that it was going to be this year for Foyer, but now it's lowered. And so I, I feel as though – you know, that was sort of a, a situation where clearly Foyer has, um, you know, proven himself as a leader on this defense. They want to retain him. They want to keep him here and, and, and play. Um, but it also says that, you know, Chad Muma is not a guy that necessarily is going to go in there um, within the next couple of years. And, and who knows if, if he's going to be extended. You know, you only have a couple of years left. So what are people mad at? The fact that, mm-hmm. you know, is it, oh, Bulky should be – Spending all his time getting a deal done with Josh <laughs> Allen is that what it is that that I, I I think I think people are mad just just in general on on you know you draft a guy in in in, in uh, 2022 you, you invest yeah. so much money you invest Foyer you invest in Devin you trade up for him and then you you draft a a, a linebacker you know and pick five of the third round you know he's supposed to be a guy that's supposed to come in and mm-hmm. play so I think that that that's mainly the the angst I would imagine then on the other side it's you know. What, Balky can't do any wrong and and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like there's just a little bit of angst uh, for that situation. What grade would you give Trent Balky for his run here as a GM, including what they've gotten done so far in this year's offseason before we even get to the draft here in three weeks? But what kind of grade would you give Balky for what he's done as the GM here the last couple of years? Be careful. If I'm being being completely (laughs) – yeah. If I'm being completely honest, honestly, I don't care what people say about my opinions, but um, I would say like a C plus, and and I think that that's a pretty high grade, and, and it makes sense because if you look at where the roster was um, before he was fully, um, you know, enshrined as the team's GM, you know, the, it wasn't good. It just it simply wasn't. We, we as much as everyone maligns about um, Dave Caldwell and, and how the pass regimes went. Um, yeah, you know, that, that still carried over into 2021. I do think he did a pretty good job, especially in 2022, free agency, bringing in guys, several guys who can come in and play and, and, and it got them to the, you know, AFC divisional round of the playoffs. So I, I do think that, you know, thus far he's done a C-plus job. I think what weighs him down heavily, in my opinion, is the draft. So if you look at the 2021 draft, um, if you guys can name me, three players on there for sure will be here beyond, you know, 2025, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some money, you know, the, the same with 2022. Um, that's a tough one to project anyone really being on the team besides Trayvon, Devin, perhaps Luke uh, beyond 2025, 2026. So, you know, I think that those are sort of where, where, where it drops him down a peg in my eyes, but I, I think overall in team building, I think he's done an okay job. I think if you look at that 21 draft and obviously we were looking at a lot of drafts today, I, I mean, I could see a number of these guys being here for second contracts. I, and I don't include Travis Etienne because Tony and I are of the okay. mind that, you know, the way that position is, you draft the yeah. next guy. You pick up the option and then let, right, you wave goodbye. Right, your option yeah. and let him go. But Trevor Lawrence, Tyson Campbell, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with Walker Little, you know, beyond right. this year. How many of the three tackles that we have here are, are put it this way, we know Anton Harrison's mm-hmm. here. Out of Cam Robinson, Walker Little. Is he the one at Jacksonville Jaguar in 2025? That's yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it, it's so tough. The way that they've used or or not used Walker Little would signal to me that they don't view him as highly as maybe other people do. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that he hasn't really given or been given a legitimate shot, I feel like to compete at right tackle, he wasn't really given that. Um, in 22, and then he he was given the shot to play at left tackle in, this year, but then Cam comes back and he's at left guard. So it doesn't feel like they know exactly where they want him to even play. So to me, um, you know, it would signal him being guard potentially after this season. And then for Cam Robinson, it's really tough. I mean, you, I, to me, unless they extend him before the season starts, I think this is his last year easily. Uh, I don't see them bringing back a guy who's been as, as off – injured as he has and I do think that they feel that Anton Harrison could become a left tackle so I think that that's a pretty big uh, question pretty pretty big storyline to follow uh, as we get closer I know you joined the mock draft circus yesterday with your own seven round mock draft 
the, over there for the Times Union. Looking ahead three weeks to the draft, what positions would you anticipate the Jags addressing during the first three rounds, the first two days of the draft this year? Yeah, I, I think it's obvious for the, for two positions, wide receiver and, and, and cornerback. I think that those two, especially corner, are going to be addressed. They have to be addressed. Um, those are the only positions where I can even see um, – a big hole in my opinion, at least if you project into the future. And so I think that those are, those are the two positions, but then after that, it really could go either way. I I definitely obviously see them needing an edge. I know they brought in Travis Gibson, um, but you know, given his production or or, or lack of, and and most of his career, I feel like it's not, it's not good to just have him there. So, you know, I I think, I do think that they're going to have to go edge. Um, So yeah, those first three, I, I do feel like wide receiver, cornerback edge, uh, make make the most sense, but I really could see an offensive tackle given just just what we talked about uh, within you know the first couple picks as well. Uh, defensive tackle as well. I mean, it, we all know, you know? right? We, we all know what the groups are that they're going to come out of, and uh, I, I'm honestly I'm not going to be upset if they address one of those premier groups, even if it's not the guy I thought I got to give him a chance to prove me right or wrong. I've been wrong mm-hmm. on plenty of them over the years, but uh, before we, we wrap up with you this morning, Demetrius, you know, so Foya gets a contract. We know Josh Allen is out there, maybe going to get one by July 15th, maybe not. Trevor Lawrence is eligible for one this offseason. Yeah. Tyson Campbell is also eligible for a contract extension going in the last year of his rookie deal. What's the order that those three deals get done? Um, if I had to guess, and I think this is a pretty good guess, uh, Tyson can or uh, excuse me, Josh Allen gets done first, and then uh, Trevor Lawrence, and then Tyson after the season. I don't think that that Tyson Campbell contract is going to get done before the season. Uh, but you um, think so, uh, Josh gets done by July fifteenth? It sounds like. I do. I, I I think so. I think they all know uh, it has to get done. It, it it really would be it really would be kind of silly to to go into the season play him on the franchise and then try to franchise him again or whatever the case may be i just feel like just get it done get it over with you know you're 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 all wrapped up and then you can you can go ahead and finish trevor out i feel like that makes the most sense doug reopened the door to the conversation about who the play caller is going to be for this team a few weeks ago we haven't really talked to you about it uh since then demetrius but who do you think right now will be the primary play caller for the jags this year yeah, it's funny. I don't. I really don't think it matters that much. But um, I, I do think that I do think that Doug will probably call plays. The, the the fact that he hasn't just said, you know, yeah, clearly Press will call the plays again, uh, signals to me that he's either already made the decision that he's going to call plays and just doesn't want to say it, or he's clearly very much mulling it over. So whatever the direction goes, I do think that eventually it'll result in Doug calling the plays. Um, it, it just feels like that, that that makes the most sense. He's able to take over the offense a little bit more than he was last year because he has Ryan Nielsen now as a defensive coordinator. So, yeah, go go ahead and, and get back in there as, as the play caller, I guess. All right, what is Demetrius Harvey Esquire working on for the Florida <laughs> Times Union uh, in the next <laughs> few weeks? you have, like, some big features that you have planned, or what can you let us know about? Mm. Uh, no huge features planned. I'm just diving into the draft stuff. Okay. You know, I, it, with, 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 with all the stuff that we had to do uh, before the combine, the owners meetings, all that, haven't really been able to dive in really as, as I wanted to. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'll have a mock draft every Monday on Jacksonville.com if you guys want to check it out and tell the draft. Um, and then we're going to have some position breakdowns. We're going to have some potential trade ideas, all that kind of stuff um, at Jacksonville.com. Well, I will extend an invite uh, on a date to be determined between all of us that works for everybody. Hopefully we can get you in maybe for a show like the week before the draft, maybe you and Ship and, and do kind of a round table and uh, let people pick your brains on everything you're hearing with about a week out. So hopefully we can time that up to work it out. That sounds fun to me. All right. Uh, Demetrius Harvey, Florida Times Union. He, I had him on the spot, Tony. What's he going to say? That's an awful <laughs> idea. Uh, Big Meech, we appreciate you, Demetrius. And uh, at Demetrius82 is where you will find him on the X or Twitter platform. Uh, until the next time, buddy, we appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys. All right. There he goes, Demetrius Harvey of the Florida Times Union. And Miles Jack. A guy, Tony. I thought we might get like five rushing touchdowns one year out of Miles Jack. Yeah. You know what? I mean? He was so good as a running back. He just, oh, you you need a running back? I'll play that. I'll play it at a crazy high level at UCLA as mm-hmm. well. In addition to being a top ten prospect at uh, middle linebacker, but uh, yeah, I, I think Miles. I think he's had a solid career, just not approaching the heights some 
no. predicted for him. So. No, and I, I think, you know, what Demetrius said there is fair. I was right there with him. You know, I looked at Miles Shaq and thought, if that had been the pick the Jags made in the first round where they took Jalen mm-hmm. Ramsey, if Miles Shaq had been the name that was called, I wouldn't have blinked. I would have been like, okay. I'm not saying that I would have had Miles Shaq ahead of Jalen Ramsey on my list of what I would like to see the Jags do there. But if Jalen had gone before the Jags picked, and he could have, right? Whenever if that had been the situation, Jalen was gone and they said Miles Shaq name, I would have been like, Yeah, it makes sense to yeah. me. You well, know, he's talked about as that kind of guy, and then the whole what was it, the microfracture the thing, deal yeah. with the knee, and 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 it was going to be a chronic thing, and he wouldn't yeah. last five years in the league, and all that stuff. He's since retired and come back. Yes, uh, it wasn't the knee. He's just like you know, at a point of diminishing returns, he's made a bunch of money. Uh, good for Miles Jack. Got but, a candle company. Uh, is that what he's doing now, making candles? I don't know. He did. I remember Jalen Ramsey made fun of him. Yeah. I don't even know. If, I don't know if he's doing it. Or I, t- not, I take that as a badge of honor, <laughs> honestly. If I were that, uh, uh, pockets, maybe you should make some candles, man. Think of how attractive you, you're making yourself, your profile <laughs> for the ladies right now. Yo, right? whenever uh, any of the ladies over here, they when they pop a candle, I always go in there like, what flavor is that? See, is that sand- every time? Is that sandalwood? Always ask him, is that sandalwood? He'll be impressed. Oh, okay. it's weird so. to ask a flavor of a candle. Yeah, I will say scent. that. This is what's saying. He knows. <laughs> he knows what's up, man. <laughs> These ladies over here. You know them. Them females right? across Did the hall. Did you taste the candle before you lit? Like what, what, what flavor? Is flavor. That? Hey, you never know. Some you people, know what I mean. You know, people chew wax, man. I don't. I don't get. I, don't, sure. I ain't one of that people. I, I'm not either. It's very strange but mm-hmm. anyway we got number one on our list to unveil so we'll mm-hmm. do that next and then if we have some time we'll look at some of the top fives that people submitted yeah. today and again this is very personal uh, to the point where we've each listed four players that we feel like we were very wrong on jaguar draft picks and we've yet to repeat one that anybody right. else has had on their list i feel so strongly about number one that i wouldn't be surprised if there's overlap on this one but okay. it's there's been no overlap so far so we'll see what happens we will find out Coming up next, this is Jaguars Today. Mike Dempsey, Tony Smith, Dylan Denmark on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. It's a Jaguars Today Tuesday on 1010XL. From the Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Studios. Brought to you by DreamFinders Homes. Hey, what's up? This is Tiki Barber, former New York Giant. And this is Tiki Barber. A lot of room to run. First down and more. You're listening to 1010XL. You don't have to be a football star to get a signing bonus. The team at Republic Services needs your skills, and they're paying up to $5,000 for you to join the roster. You'll be joining a winner. As an essential business, the Republic Services trucks have not stopped rolling with hourly and weekly pay and better benefits and vacation packages than the rest of the league. Driver trainees, $1,000 sign-on bonus. CDL drivers, $3,000. Diesel mechanics, $5,000 bonus. Join the winning team at Republic Services today. Visit republicservices.com. Equal opportunity and it's Kubota Orange Days, your golden chance to score a deal that will make your neighbors green with envy. Shop the year's best selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. And get the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off L3302 tractors. Coastal Equipment on New Kings Road and in McClenny. Coastal Equipment. It's tune-up time, and Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, wants to partner with you for a cool summer season. Tune up your AC unit right now so it's running at peak performance when you need it most. Just call 777-4300 and order a tune-up for just 59 bucks. Keep your unit humming at optimal level. Log on to FloridaHomeAC.com and take advantage of their savings. Keep cool with Florida Home AC. That's 777-4300. Visionaries, builders, and doers, are you ready to change the world? Miller Electric is your opportunity to shape the future. Miller Electric is leading the charge in electric vehicle technology with our state-of-the-art EV Innovation Design Center. We're working to create a sustainable future. We're also the proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, powering their performance at the brand-new Miller Electric Center. Miller Electric, we provide competitive pay, unbeatable benefits. Apply today. MillerCareers.com, Miller Electric, an equal opportunity employer. Progressive presents Precious Moments. Hey, Jess, want to come for a ride on my motorcycle? You know, we can talk about our feelings and explore our emotional compatibility. I thought you'd never ask. The exchange you just heard didn't actually happen, but it could. 
Bundle your home and other vehicles with Progressive and you could use the savings to make sure the motorcycle is always ready for your dream girl. So keep the dream alive and the savings coming with Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states. Cooking with Prisco. They say it's a wonderful. You're going to love it. Have a rolling. Oh. <laughs> Catch CBS Sports Senior NFL writer Pete Prisco every Friday afternoon on The Franchi Show. Brought to you by Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles on 1010XL. Brian and Angela Wall here with Window World. You've heard us talk about it. Window World, the number one window replacement company in the USA, selling over 1 million windows each year for the past eight years. That's a lot of satisfied customers and why J.D. Powers has awarded Window World best in customer satisfaction three out of four years. Window World stands behind their slogan, simply the best for less. With Window World, you get top quality windows at a price that leaves more of your money in your bank account, and you get the absolute best guarantee there is in the window replacement industry. When compared to our competition, there is none. See for yourself. Call the competition. Get quotes from them. But before you buy, get Window World's free estimate and compare the quality of the windows and the price. You'll see. And when your new Window World windows are installed and they're saving you money on your energy bills, if anything goes wrong with those windows, Window World and I will be there to make it right. That's my guarantee. Call Window World today. Start saving money on your new windows and your energy bills and take vacation with your savings. Window World, online at windowworldneflorida.com. Window Window World, World, simply simply the the best best for less. less. Thank you for your business. Window World also offers energy-efficient doors and siding. (sighs) Ah, <sighs> the sun's out, the water's cool, it's a perfect day for boating. What's that boat doing? Perfect boating days can quickly turn into disasters when drugs and alcohol are involved. Don't let boating under the influence ruin your day. FWC officers have zero tolerance for impaired operators. If you're over the limit, you're under arrest. Learn more at myfwc.com. Brought to you by the FWC Division of Law Enforcement. When it's time for the March Mania brackets, the bus wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The Mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. Bonus offers. And when the madness starts and Cinderella, man steps under the. BetUS always has your back with. Back to back to back. 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits. And even 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game. Join today, Bet US Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555, Jacksonville. This is Jaguars Today on 1010XL. All right, most recent submission, Tony. Who are the five Jacksonville Jaguar draft picks you're most wrong about over the years in either direction? ETN. Oh, okay. Which direction were you wrong about him in? Yeah. Better or worse? Had to be. Who were the other four? He's better than you thought, yeah. Uh, I'm going to skip the ones that uh, just submitted one name for the most part, unless they submitted it five times. Okay. Which in the case of someone uh, said Fred Taylor, that I got to own my losses, Mm. and uh, they put Freddie five times. I hear from Teal Ordeal, Blaine Gabbert. Uh, And I'm presuming most of these are ones who disappointed you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in most of these cases. Blake Gabbert, Jonathan Cyprian, Blake Bortles, Luke Jokel, Evan Britt. It's all a lot of mention of Evan Britt yeah. today. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's see who else we've got here. Next one from Coach Ripley, Marcus Stroud in a good way. Reggie Williams, thought he'd be great. Blake Bortles, Justin Blackman, Dante Fowler. Uh, let's see from Fwad, too high on Bortles, too high on Cyprian, too low on Trayvon Walker. Too low on A-Rob. And by the way, I, I try to leave the guys who are still on their rookie deals off yeah. this, right? A lot can change. For me, personally, you sure. didn't have to. Too low on A-Rob. Thought Lee would be better. Thought Chase Hunt's floor was much higher than it was. There's Pops going uh, Fred Taylor five times. <laughs> uh, let's see. My biggest miss was easily not being ecstatic about Jalen Ramsey. Also, Marquise Lee thought he'd be incredible. It's from Travis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Denard Robinson, he was on my list, way too high in the offensive weapon. C.J. Henderson, still no idea what to learn from this miss. <laughs> Don't draft guys that seem uninterested in football. Uh, and then Jordan Smith. A lot of people, I think that was yeah. like wish casting on Jordan Smith. Yeah. You know, but a lot of people had high hopes for Jordan Smith. Uh, let's see. Simple answer for Mike. Most of our first-round picks with a few notable exceptions, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, here's from Altered Lake, uh, C.J. Henderson, thought he'd be an easy Ramsey replacement. T.J. Yeldon, thought he was better than Mark Ingram coming out. 
Ronnie Harrison thought he was going to be our safety till 2027. Mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne Grotz and Jonathan Cyprian thought that duo would be cornerstone defensive backs, thought the 2013 draft was awesome. Uh, mostly a pessimist, said Ed. Mercedes Lewis, best tight end they drafted, yes. Gardner Minshew, yeah, I I'll give you that. Telvin Smith, key part of Saxville. I was excited. Boy, that that's I was not, excited about right? him. That like, they could get him in the fifth was like, oh my god! In the fifth, yeah, you know, and he felt size, yes, but the the positive test for marijuana helped him fall as well. You got yeah. five really good years out of Telvin. Uh, yeah. Josh Allen thought he was going to be okay at best. Said Ed and Lavisca thought he'd be good. Mm -hmm. uh, you had him on there. Uh, let's see anybody. Else? Chenault, Marquise Lee, Cyprian, the boat. And Jokel, thought the boat was going to be Big Ben Part 2. Another Evan Britton on here, a lot of Cyprian. Linder hated the trade-up. It turned out to be good for a long time. Wouldn't we love to have something like that right now? Center that you can count on for a decade. Let's go, yeah. Fournette and Chase on. Uh, Andrew said mainly negatively, Chenault, Fortner, Lloyd, D.D. Westbrook, Tyson Campbell. By the way, uh, Fortner got that. It's really playing time. Fortner and Campbell on based. there already. Yeah, Fortner and Campbell. Well, Campbell positive, better yeah. than he thought he'd be. Yeah. Okay. And Fortner, I'm guessing negatively. Negative. Yeah. Uh, Fortner got like 800 grand last year. He did. So playing that, not he played a lot. He played a lot. Exactly. This yeah. this performance based. Well, it's he performed enough to keep yeah. his, himself on the field. He got a bunch of snaps. He's he played a, a bunch of snaps. Starting center. Right. So he's going to get a bunch of snaps. And he got a lot of money. Yeah. For doing that, so feel sorry not for Luke Fortner. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, pockets. Where are we at? Number one. Where you at, Pockets? Number one Number player. one was a Gator, so I got two Gators on my top five list. Go Gator. Go Gator. I had Reggie Nelson. I okay. remember, so Reggie Nelson was the number one. He was one of the first players that I remember. I started watching football in 06. He was all over the place for that defense in 2006 for Florida. The eraser back then. Yeah, and I thought he'd kind of do a lot of the Jacksonville. Didn't happen. Then he goes in typical Jacksonville fashion, goes to Cincinnati and has a decent career. See, but that's the, why I didn't put him on the list. Mm -hmm. Were you wrong about him, or were the Jags wrong in how they used him? Like, he went and he made a couple of Pro Bowls in Cincinnati. Yeah. I feel like he was the guy. He led the league in safeties uh, or, or as yeah. in interceptions as, as a safety. And he was never in 2015. bad here. Right, right. He, had, he was just a kind of a middle of the road safety while he, had he was here. Five picks as a rookie. How yeah. many Jags have ever had five picks in a season? Right. You know, but he wasn't the eraser. I'll grant you that, bro. He was not. I thought they were getting a star when they drafted Reggie. So yeah. I'm not I, faulting you, by the way. A lot of people mentioned Reggie here. I heard ET talking about him this morning as we were kicking this around in between shows. But my man went on to play one, two, three, four, five, six, nine more years in the league. Yeah. And had 31 interceptions in those nine seasons. That's pretty good. Yeah, he's a player. Uh, Reggie Nelson had 38 career picks. So, you know, in a dozen seasons. So, uh, I did not, like, here, if you want to look at his Jaguar tenure, absolutely. For me, number one guy on this list, Byron Leftwich, man. Mm. I just, I, I mean, I was like everybody else who saw him being carried down the field. I said, this guy. You want the D-A-W-G before we started looking for the D-A-W-Gs. Byron was that dog, man. He was playing with a broken freaking leg, just going out there and humming BBs, right? And out, poured in cement, right? Like, couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't move, but toughest dude you'll ever want on your side mm -hmm. and still could throw it, funky wind up and all that. I just thought there was something about that guy. I thought there was some just special – Quality and I get it. If you didn't draft him, you could have drafted Roethlisberger. I thought Leftwich was going to be a star. I really did. I thought, oh my god, we got one, man. And the way it all went down, um, to get him at number seven uh, in two thousand three, totally. Byron wasn't the worst quarterback this franchise ever had, by no. the way, but uh, not close to what I'd hoped it would be sure. for Byron Leftwich. So Tony, your number one, our final player today. We managed it. We did it. All we 15. got 15 names, 15 and we 15. got 15 different names. All right. Uh, my number one is Justin Blackman. First round pick in 2012. I don't think I have ever been more excited about a Jaguars draft pick than I was Blackman. But were you wrong about him? Yes. You were because, because he didn't play three years. 
right? But like, that, but where you're wrong about him, the talent, I I couldn't put him on there for that reason. But it's a supreme talent, back to back Bolitnikoff Award winner, mm-hmm. consensus All American twice at Oklahoma State, where he scored 39 touchdowns in his final two seasons. I can remember watching his preseason debut and just smiling watching him catch a football. Right, like that's how enamored I was with Justin Blackman, the player, when he got here. Seven catches for 236. We've talked about that a bunch. His rookie year there in Houston. Stories from Cecil Shorts that we've heard over the years about the absolute show he would put on at practice every day. We all know how this story ends, right? Like it's he's not able to keep himself straight enough to be on the field for year three. Uh, multiple suspensions after during that second season, several years to follow where there would be some quiet but consistent part of the fan base, we've all seen it, that would ask if he'd be able to play again this year. Is this the year we get him back? Which can only be explained, right, by the tease that was having him on the field. Like, that's the only reason someone's still asking four years after it happened. It's like, can they play him now? Is he is he back in, is he straight enough now that we can get him back on the football field? Blackman, still just 34 years old. By the way, Justin Blackman, and could potentially right now have been well into his second decade as the alpha mm-hmm. that the Jacksonville Jaguars are still looking for. Like he looked every bit of that his rookie year here in Jacksonville, and then it completely collapsed on him. It did. It's as disappointed as I've ever been here, with any of that. Here's though for me, I here's what I thought about Justin Blackman. I thought he'd be a stud, and I felt like he was. You know, and and to me, I put the, you know, the self-inflicted whatever. I don't feel like we were wrong about Justin Blackman. I think he was that guy. And no, we were robbed of Justin Blackman by sure. Blackman. But I don't yeah. think you were wrong about the pick. I that, that's my opinion. That's how I looked at it. Like I felt like we thought we we're getting a star, and he was, but he couldn't stay on the field. That's fair. I, I felt like we got the guy that we saw at Oklahoma State, but we got robbed of the opportunity to see him for uh, much time at all. And, you know, it is what it is uh, at that point. And uh, uh, what could have been with what Justin Blackman? What could have been indeed. Uh, no doubt about it. All right. Um, let me look something up here. What am I looking for? Yes. Uh, <laughs> in the YouTube chat. Google's your friend, YouTube chat. Mm-hmm. Somebody said, hey, you know that Leftwich game where you got carried down the field? The quarterback on the opposing team was David Garrard. <laughs> Well, that'd be tough since he was already on the Jaguars yeah. at that point. And they also played Akron in that game and not East Carolina. But other than that, yes, is I don't know how you got that one in your head. How he, long have you been telling your friends that? Yes, that is uh, – that. Uh, look, uh, Josh Evans was also a sixth-round pick, so we can all be wrong. Uh-huh. Right? And I will own my, my mistakes on that one. No, David Garrard was drafted by the Jaguars the year prior uh, to Byron Leftwich having that. That was the, the lasting – memory of mm-hmm. that game was no the, of his career was uh, that and that you know propelled him into the 2003 draft but they had taken Garrard in the 2002 draft in the fourth round one of the best value draft picks that this uh, team has ever had the good fortune to stumble into mm-hmm. over the time but uh, you know and I agree with you Rob Meyer was a fantastic guy if I thought much about him when they took him probably would have made my list as well all right my top five today going from one through five these are the guys we were the most wrong about in Jaguar draft history, and uh, four of the five I was too high on. Too high on Leftwich, too high on Matt Jones, too high on Denard Robinson, too low on Ernest Wilford, too high on Mike Pearson, the tackle out of Florida. Who are your top? Five? Uh, my five was Quincy Williams, third round pick in 2019, Rob Meyer at four, seventh round pick in 2000, LaVisca Chenault, second round pick in 2020 at three. Caleb Von Chase on the first round pick that year in 2020 at number two on the list, and Justin Blackman, uh, the first round pick in 2012. Pockets, your five were D.D. Westbrook, Dante Fowler, Marquise Lee, Luke Jokel, and Reggie Nelson. Thought they'd <sighs> Did, all be a little better. And we, all of those for you were guys you were higher on. Yes, than you should have been. Correct. Four out of my five, four out of Tony's five. Mm-hmm. Right. So 13 out of the 15 we came up with, we were too high on, and we didn't duplicate a single pick. Yeah. And I don't know if we even came all Well, I guess the four and five for me are probably guys that qualify as too low. Were they? Because Quincy Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah, like yeah. I Quincy. wound up shooting too low. I was right about him. I felt like when they let him go and he wound up with the Jets like, yeah, it just didn't work out. And now he's 
Yeah, now he's even way beyond what yeah. you thought he might be. All right, well, that's going to do it for us today. Appreciate all those out there uh, who played along in Radio Land and submitted their top five list to us. Uh, if you want to check those out, you can commiserate or remember down uh, memory lane fondly at MD underscore 1010XL. Uh, thanks to Demetrius Harvey for joining the program today from the Florida Times Union. Tomorrow, Tony Pauline stops by from Sports Kedia, one of the best in the draft analyst biz, and we'll get his thoughts on this uh, class in terms of prospects, where the Jags are going to be selecting, who would be good selections for the Jags, maybe some outliers in his personal rankings as well. That's on tomorrow's program. That'll do it for us today, though. Coming up next, helmets and heels. Uh, Lauren, Taylor, and Mia coming your way for the next couple hours with R.J. Saunders. For Tony Smith and Dylan Denmark, I'm Mike Dempsey. We'll be back again tomorrow from 10 to noon right here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. Jaguars 